Welcome to EPG Path Shala. I am Kiran Kumar Salam, working as Assistant Professor in Hindu College, University of Delhi. Today let us discuss module number 19, Translation and Post-Translational Modification in Eukaryotes. After going through this chapter, you will be able to understand the following. Eukaryotic post-translational events, purpose of post-translational modification, why the proteome diversity is much higher than that of the genome. How the post-translational modification help in maintaining the biological activities within the cell. And lastly, the various diseases studied by identifying the PTMs responsible to the malfunctioning of the cell. The introduction. Genome has a large number of genes and their expressions are highly regulated with respect to the needs of the cell and its surrounding. Transcription and a translation are well coordinated processes involved in the transmission of genetic information from DNA to RNA to proteins and the regulation occurs at each stage. Genetic information in mRNA is converted to polypeptide through a process of translation by making use of ribosomal machinery as shown in the figure 1. It consists of three fa phases namely initiation, elongation and termination. Initiation, the process in which the ribosome binds to the mRNA and initiate polypeptide synthesis is called initiation. This binding of ribosome and mRNA takes place at the initiator or start codon AUG which codes for the amino acid methionine. Elongation, when the polypeptide is lengthened by adding one amino acid at a time using mRNA as a template and the tRNA bringing the next nucleotide as a coded by the template, it is termed as the elongation process. Termination. Synthesis of polypeptide is the curved or restricted on encountering the stop codon like UAZ, UAA, UGA and the entire machinery dissociates. However, the polypeptide produced from the translation are not ready to function as a discrete protein molecule. This nascent polypeptide needs to be further processed that is folded or molded to achieve the desired structure for proper functioning of the protein. This modification of the polypeptide could take place while they are being still synthesized that is co-translational modification or once their synthesis is completed post-translational modification or simply PTM. The newly synthesized protein are non-functional and require activation under proper physiological condition by appropriate proteases. This inactivated precursor of the protein which can be activated either by peptide cleavage example signal peptide or addition of the certain groups example phosphate, methyl etc. are known as the pre-pro-protein as shown in the figure 2. Certain polypeptides have an inbuilt ability to fold and achieve the required complete matured conformation without the help of any molecule. However, most polypeptides require chaperones to help them fold properly. Sometimes the modification occurs after the tertiary structure is completed to activate or inactivate the catalytic property influenced by the biological activity of the cell. Misfolded proteins are often tagged so that they can be degraded. Also, more than one modification is observed in some proteins by adding various functional groups in the sequential manner to accomplish the protein maturation or activation. Purpose of post-translational modification. Post-translational modification or a PTM are accomplished by various covalent and non-covalent interactions of the polypeptide. This modification helps in converting the polypeptide into a protein molecule having all the functional properties and give the required three-dimensional macromolecular structure. Proteomic diversity is accomplished because of the PTM. 
PTMs also help in the protein stabilization, biochemical activity, regulation, protein targeting like localization through the signal peptide or protein signaling through the protein-protein interaction or a cascade amplification. Human genome is expected to have around 25 to 20 20 to 25,000 genes, but the proteomic diversity is estimated to be around 1 million proteins. The abundance in the proteomes uh, relative to the size of the gene is the result of the change in the changes which occur in the transcription and mRNA level. PTM result in an exponential increase in the proteome complexity relatively much higher than the proteome uh, transcriptomes and the genome. PTMs are a result of a various cellular activities within a cell in response to an environmental stimuli and it leads to the dynamic human proteomes. PTMs are very well uh, specific and occurs at a distinct amino acid side chain at a peptide linkage often mediated by kinase, phosphatase, transferase and ligases which themselves are classified on the basis of their ability to aid, remove or transfer a protein, liquid, lipid or uh, sugar, phosphate group, etc. Even autocatalytic domain have been identified in a certain protein which can modify themselves and are known as the autokinase. Autoprotolytic uh, domain, reverse PTMs have been observed in the kinases that is enzymed with phosphorylate protein at a specific amino acid side chain for catalytic activations or inactivations and the phosphatase that is enzymed which removed a phosphate group from a protein and reverse its biological activity. PTMs are helpful to analyze a specific protein which a protein and its role in various diseases like cancer, diabetes, neurodegenerative diseases and the heart diseases. Post-translational modification. An integral part of the post-transcriptional mechanism within a cell is a directing a newly synthesized protein molecule to their proper destinations by taking the protein and the take is known as the signal peptide. Discovery of signal peptide is attributed to Gunter Blobel for which he was awarded the 1999 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. Membrane bound protein, excretory proteins and the glycoproteins are synthesized by the ribosomes which are associated with the rough endoplasmic reticulum RER. A signal peptide or a sequence directs a nascent polypeptide to a rough endoplasmic reticulum. Only the proteins that have an end terminal signal sequence can enter the RER. A signal recognition protein SRP binds to the signal sequence as it first exits the ribosome and stops the translation process. The SRP bound ribosomes that is entire trans translation complex attached to the SRP receptor in the ER as shown in the figure 5. The SRP receptor is a heterodimeric unit having an alpha and a beta subunit. SRP has a translocation channel through which the emerging polypeptide is extruded into the ER lumen. This translocation channel is the referred to as the translocone. The signal peptide is cleaved by a serine protease family known as the signal peptidase and release in the lumen of ER. Pre-protein often have a signal peptide with them which is lacking in the pro-protein. However, some proteins that are destined for secretions are also further proteolized following the secretions and are termed the pre-pro-protein. PTMs are of various types depending upon the groups which are being added to or substituted within the polypeptide chain for the protein activation. Table 1 tells us about the most common amino acid site where the modifications occur, the effect of the post-translation modification and whether the modification is of the reversible or irreversible type. Phosphorylations of or the additions of the phosphate group. 
phosphorylation helps in regulating the biological activity of the enzyme and the proteins. It is one of the most common reversible PTM in animal cells. Specific kinases are responsible for aiding or removing the phosphate group. Physiological relevance can be cited in the glycogen uh, metabolism in the hepatocytes. Phosphorylation inhibits the activity of the glycogen synthase and increases the activity of the glycogen phosphorylase, the enzyme that is responsible for the breakdown of the glycogen in the tissue. In response to the hormone, glucagon secretes from the pancreatic cells. This is helpful in regulating the blood glucose level of the organism. Kinases aid the phosphate group, whereas the phosphatase remove the phosphate group as shown in the figure 6. The reaction catalyzed by the protein kinase is the given. ATP plus the protein gives the phosphoprotein uh, plus N. Common amino acids subject to phosphorylations are serine, threonine and tyrosine in the animal cells. For example, tyrosine phosphorylations affect the activity of the numerous growth factors. Methylations, the addition of the methyl group. Post-translational methylations occur in the nitrogen or oxygen molecule of the protein and namely N-methylation or O-methylations respectively. Activated as adenosyled methionine or the SAM is the methyl donor. Commonly, uh, methylations are observed in the epsilon amine of the R group of lysine residues and the guano uh, moiety of the R group of the arginine. Chromatin remodeling is uh, necessary for the transcriptional activity and is regulated by the methylations of lysine residues in the histone proteins present in the nucleosome activity of the numerous transcriptions factor are modified due to the methylation. Human express 25 lysine K methyl transferase identified as a KMT family enzyme and a 9 arginine methyl transferases. Methylation of oxygen of the R group carboxylates of the glutamate and aspartate also takes place and forms a methyl ester. Protein can also be methylated on the thiol R group of the cysteine. Glycosylations or the addition of the sugar. Uh, groups glycosylations involved uh, a covalent bonding between the secretory or the membrane bound protein and the carbohydrate moieties. These moieties are mostly oligosaccharide known as the glycan. This is shown in the figure 7. The sugar group may ultimately be important to the protein functions or it may simply act as an address level uh, required to get the protein to its next cellular destination. Importance of the PTM can be emphasized as more than 50% of the proteins are glycosylated. It occurs either in the ER or a Golgi body, arginine linked or end link or a serine or threonine linked or O linked oligosaccharides are the major structural component of many cell surfaces and secreted protein. Mm -hmm. The predominant sugars found in the glycoproteins are the glucose, galactose, mannose, fucose, N-acetyl glucosamine, acetyl galactosamine and N-acetyl neuraminic acid, also known as the NaNA or a sialic acid. The distinction between the proteoglycans and the gly glycoproteins resides in the level and the type of the carbohydrate modifications which are given below in the table 2. Take a moment to understand the table. The protein sorting, immune recognition, receptor binding, inflammations and pathogenicities are the certain crucial role in the cellular process which involve the glycoproteins. Heterogeneity in the glycoprotein in mass and the charges result due to the diversity of the attached oligosaccharides.
Glycosylation helps us to maintain the tertiary and quaternary structure of the protein, the unique structure of the FAP molecule in the immunoglobulin G utilizes as many as a 30 glycoprotein interaction. N glycosylation is the attachment of the glycan towards the nitrogen atom of the protein and the O glycosylation uh, the glycan attached to the oxygen atom. The ABO blood group the variability is due to the different terminal glycoprotein as shown in the figure A. Blood group O lacks the glycan whereas the blood group A and B have a N uh, acetyl glucosamine and a galactose respectively. Disulfide bone or the formation of the covalent bone between the two cysteine amino acid. Disulfide bone provides uh, a stability and hence the functionality to the tertiary and the quaternary structures of the protein and involves appropriate folding of the polypeptide chain. These foldings are of three types covalent modifications of the side chain in the, uh, in the polypeptide hydrolytic cleavage or isomerizations of the peptide bond and lastly the reductive cleavage of the disulfide bone. This bonding help in the stabilization of the mature protein and remain unchanged throughout the protein's lifespan. These covalent bonds are formed by oxidative linkage of the sulfhydryl group also known as the thiol group of the two cysteine residue in the same or a different polypeptide chain. However, a functional disulfide bone is of the two types catalytic and allosteric bone. The catalytic bone helps in the enzymatic reaction. The allosteric disulfide bone may be due to the ligand binding, substrate hydrolysis, proteolysis or oligomeric formations by certain oxidoreductases or by thiol or disulfide exchanges. Hence, they control the function of the mature protein in which they are present. Proteins flexibility is dependent on the allosteric control in which the change at the allosteric side is influenced, uh, the side influences the another side responsible for the enzymatic activity. Disulfide bond are present on the secretory proteins and the exoplasmic domain of the membrane protein which are synthesized on the ER. The soluble cytosolic protein which are synthesized on the free ribosome lack disulfide bond and depend on the other interactions to have a stable structure. Thus, in the eukaryotes, disulfide bones are present in the ER but absent uh, from the cytosol. Localizations of these the bones within the ER lumen indicate that ER has a favorable redox environment for the oxidation of the thiol groups, which is absent in the cytosol. It has been observed in the yeast cells that a mutation in the ER membrane protein leads to the inability in the production of the disulfide bone, suggesting the participations of that particular protein in the oxidations of the thiol groups in the ER lumen. Glutathione, a major thiol containing molecule in the eukaryotic cells uh, which serves to prevent the formation of the disulfide bone in the cytosol as it is shown in the figure 9. Glutathione shuttle between the redu reduced form that is GSH and the oxidized form uh, disulfide linked dimer GSSG, the ratio of the GSH to GSSG is over 50 is to 1 in the cytosol oxidase. GSSG in the cytosol is the reduced by the enzyme uh, glutathione to reductase using the electron from the, pot, uh, from the potent reducing agent N NADPH. The cytosolic protein in the bacterial and eukaryotic cells do not utilize the disulfide bone as a stabilizing force because of the high GSH to GSSG ratio, which would drive the system in the direction of cysteine SH and away from the cysteine sulfur sulfur cysteine.
A proper pairing of the disulfite bond is essential for the normal structure and function of the protein. During the synthesis of the immunoglobulin, disulfite bonds are formed while the polypeptide is still growing on the ribosome. As a result, the first and second cysteine closest to the end terminus forms a bond even before the third cysteine is added to the growing polypeptide automatically ensuring the correct pairing of the cysteine molecule. Accordingly, the third cysteine pair with the fourth uh, to create the second disulfide bond. Proinsulin has three disulfide bond and the first bond forms due to the spontaneous oxidation of the SH group uh, which undergo rearrangement to get a proper conformations of the protein. The protein disulfide isomerase or PDI is, a form, ab is found abundantly in the ER um, of uh, secretory tissues like liver and pancreas and help in the rearrangement of the disulfide bone as it is shown in the figure 10. The sole purpose of this enzyme is to help the protein to reach their thermodynamically most stable conformation proteolysis or proteolytic cleavage. Proteolysis of the nascent uh, polypeptide chain to remove a particular amino acid sequence or a segment of the nascent polypeptide to achieve activations is known as the proteolytic cleavage or a proteolysis. Insulin is a brilliant example which is secreted from the pancreas as a as a prepeptide. It undergoes a cleavage at a 24 amino acid signal peptide to yield a protein which fold resulting in the formation of the proinsulin. This proinsulin is further cleaved to give active insulin having two peptide chains joined together by disulfide bone as it is shown in the figure 11. Protein often undergoes a cleavage after the translation so as to remove the initiator methionine. Some proteins are synthesized as inactive the precursors known as the gymogen which are activated by proteolytic cleavage as observed in the protein of a blood clotting cascade. Subunit binding to form the multi subunit protein. Proteins made up of more than one polypeptide are known as the multimeric protein which are usually assembled in the ER to achieve the functional quaternary structure. Immunoglobulins are made up of two subunits that is light chain L and heavy chain H all linked by disulfide bone as shown in the figure 12. Protein folding and the subunit assembly is also exhibited by hemagglutinin or HA in the ER a trimeric protein that forms the spike like the projections on the surface of the influenza virus particle within this. Within this endoplasmic reticulum uh, of an uh, infected host cell, each spike is uh, formed from three copies of the precursor protein known as HA0 which has a single membrane spanning alpha helix. In the Golgi complex, each copy of the HA0 protein is the cleave to give two polypeptide HA1 and HA2. Thus, each viral spike particles contains three copies of the HA1 and HA2. The trimer is stabilized by the interactions between the, between the exoplasmic domain of the constituent polypeptide as well as by interactions between the three cytosolic and the membrane spanning domain. S nitrosylation. Nitric oxide group are added to the thiol group of the cysteine residue and res result in the formation of the S nitrosoprotein or SNO. This is known as S nitrosylation. In addition to the protein stability, it also regulates the gene expression, provides the nitric acid donor and help in the generations localization, activations, catabolisms of uh, S nitrothiols which is formed from the nitric acids and the free cysteine residue.
These SNOs are under high regulations by caspases enzymes that mediate the apoptosis, uh, which can uh, also dinitrosylates it in response to the extra and intra uh, cellular cues. Lipidation. Covalent attachment of the lipid group to the protein helps in the localization within the cell, signal targeting membrane, tetr membrane tethering and uh, acts as a mediator of the protein-protein interaction. Example palmitylations creates a thioester link between the long chain fatty acids and cystine residues. N meristoriations uh, of a glycine residue is helpful in the membrane targeting and glycosyl uh, phosphatidyl uh, inositoyl or uh, GPI anchor additions, which is responsible for linking GPI to an extracellular protein and mediates its attachment to the plasma membrane. Acetylation. Acetylation takes place in almost all the eukaryotic cell and involves the transfer of an acetyl group to the ni uh, nitrogen atoms of the protein. It helps in the protein stability by protecting the end terminus and regulating the protein DNA interactions in the case of the histone and has both reversible and irreversible mechanism. N terminal acetylation is done by methionine aminopeptidase that is MAP which, which, uh, which results in the cleavage of uh, N terminal methionine before replacing the amino acid with an acetyl group from the acetyl coenzyme A uh, by the enzyme N acetyl transferase. Ubiquitylations. Aaron Sisanover Averend Hersko and Irwin Rose received Nobel Prize in 2004 for revealing the protein degradations and associated biological processes but responsible for controlling the cell cycle. Gene transcriptions and immunity in the eukaryotes. The damaged proteins are required to remove the, from the cell to prevent aberrant activities on the defective proteins. Cellular proteins are destroyed within the proteosomes found in the cytosol and the nucleus. Mechanism called autophagy. Autophagy pathway involves the sequestration of the targeted cytoplasmic constituents into the double membrane vesicle termed the autophagosome. Following its formation, the autophagosome fuses with the help uh, with the lysosomal machinery of the cell and the content are degraded. Misfolded proteins are attacked with ubiquitin, uh, an 8 kilodalton polypeptide consisting of 76 amino acid. DOB uh, cutilating proteins are the proteins which are not destined uh, to be degraded but are attacked for some specific purposes of regulating and not degradations. They are not destined for proteosomes degradation. The uh, DOB cutilating enzymes or the DUBs are the family of the isopeptidase performed the vital functions of removing the ubiquitin from the proteins which are modified for some specific regulatory purposes. Recycling of the ubiquitin is also carried by DUBs by cleaving the polyubiquitin chain to yield the monoubiquitin. The DUBs enzyme are old members of either the large family of the cysteine proteases or the large family of the metalloproteases. For entering the proteosomes, the proteins are first tagged by attachment of multimers of 76 amino acid protein ubiquitin. The process termed ubiquitinations or ubiquitinations. Degradations via 26S proteosome is helpful in cell cycle regulation, cell proliferation and differentiation. Program cell death, apoptosis, DNA repair, immunes and inflammatory processes and organelle biogenesis. Ubiquitinations of the target protein involves the additions of the multiple unit of a ubiquitin in a sequential manner so that the 
target protein is a polyubiquitinated before entering the proteasome. This is shown in the figure 13. The process is explained uh, below the, uh, the first, first one, the ubiquitin activating enzyme E1 activates the ubiquitin by utilizing an ATP so that the ubiquitin binds to the E1 via the energy thiol ester. Ubiquitin conjugating enzyme or a UBE or a ubiquitin carrier proteins E2 transfer the ubiquitin via an E2 thiol ester intermediate to the substrate protein. The substrate protein are recognizable by E2 as they are bound to the ubiquity uh, protein ligases E3. And lastly, the ubiquitin protein ligase uh, E3 helps in attaching the ubiquitin to the substrate protein. Usually the ubiquitin transfer takes place at the epsilon amino group of the internal lysine residue within the substrate protein. Then second step, the degradations by the proteosomes complex involves the release of ubiquitin monomers that can be reused to tag additional protein. If the proteosomes are non-functional or are deregulated, it leads to the many human diseases such as cancer, myeloproliferative uh, diseases and neurodegenerative diseases. So, in figure um, 13 shows the process of ubiquitinations and the proteosomes mediated protein degradations. Sumoylations, small ubiquitin related modifier or the sumo is a ubiquitin uh, like protein but unlike the ubiquitin, it does not participate in the protein degradation. Sumo proteins have a small ubiquitin modifier uh, proteins attached to them and help in stabilizing the protein cell cycle progressions and regulations of the transcription and the program cell death apoptosis. Vitamin C dependent modification. Vitamin C acts as a cofactor for modification of the certain proteins having proline and lysine which undergo hydroxylations and the carboxy terminal amidations. The hydroxylating enzymes are identified as the prolyl hydroxylase and the lysyl hydroxylase. Glycine acts as a donor of the amide for the C terminal amidations. Collagens are the most important hydroxylated proteins. C-terminal amidations is observed in several peptide hormones such as the oxytocin and the vasopressin. Vitamin K dependent modification. Vitamin K is a cofactor in the carbo carboxylations of the glutamic acid residues catalyzed by the enzyme gamma glutamyl carboxylase. The result of this type of the reaction is the formation of the gamma carboxyglutamate referred to as the GLA residue. Selenoproteins are proteins containing the selenium as an additional moiety in the 21st amino acid are known as the selenoproteins. The cysteine associated with the selenium is known as the selenocysteine. Their synthesis is dependent on the dietary intake of the selenium, several muscular and cardiovascular neurological disorders, immune dysfunctions, cancer, endocrine functions are impaired due to the selenium deficiency. Selenoproteins also have an essential role in a variety of cell processes and diseases. Meristoylations. Meristoylations is a PTM or a post-translational modification which occurs co-translationally or post-translationally and helps to achieve the higher level of proteomes diversity by developing complexity of the cellular functions. As shown in the figure 14, uh, it involves an attachment of a 14 carbon saturated fatty acid, meristic acid to the alpha amino group of the N-terminal glycine residue of the protein chain. It is a kind of the lipid modification in both being mystic acid as saturated fatty acid of 14 carbon with the systematic name of the N-tetradecanoic. The reaction that is the addition of the mystic acid is catalyzed by N-meristoyl transferase or NMT which occurs in the cytoplasm of the cell. 
when less than 100 residues have been polymerized to the growing chain while still attached to the ribosome, it occurs co-translationally by removing the leader methionine residue by the methionine aminopeptidase to expose the N-terminal glycine. Post-translational meristoilation involves the exposure of an internal glycine by caspases in the apoptotic cascade by cleaving the pro-apoptotic protein and occurs in approximately 80% of the meristoilated protein. Meristoilation helps in stabilization of the protein structure, the protein-protein interaction, protein localization and enhancing the protein interaction with the organelles or the plasma membrane. Meristoilation is also referred to as a molecular switch as it is uh, not only diversifies the functions of the protein molecules but also aid layers of regulation. Heat shock protein or HSP are produced under stressful conditions or when the temperature of the cell is the high and they act as the chaperones that aid in the protein folding. HSP are named according to their molecular weight, example HSP 70, HSP 90, etc. Within the endoplasmic reticulum lumen, a large number of the HSPs help in the folding of the newly synthesized protein. PDI protein disulfide isomerase is catalyzed which helps the chaperones in folding the polypeptide chain. The HSP70 is a cytosolic protein and this ER chaperones transiently bind and fold the protein to achieve a functional conformation. ER has a large number of the chaperone, two homologous lecithin, calnexins and the calrecticulin uh, bind to the specific carbohydrate which are attached to the newly synthesized proteins and aid in the protein folding. This is explained in the figure 15. While the nascent chain is the still growing calnexins and the calrecticulin, the protein folding catalyst associated with the growing chain and the three disulfide bonds are formed in the globular head domain. On completion of the translation, the three additional disulfide bonds are formed which help in rearranging the monomer. The three HA node chain then interact with each other initially via their transmembrane alpha helix. This association apparently triggers the formation of a long stem containing only uh, one alpha helix or a dark uh, zone in a dark road and the luminal part of each HA node polypeptide. Finally, interactions between the three globular heads occur generating the mature trimeric spike. Calnexins and calrecticulins bind to the end linked oligosaccharide with a single glucose residue on unfolded protein segments, thereby promoting the proper folding and assembly of the newly synthesized glycoprotein such as HA. IRE1 is a transmembrane multifunctional protein denoted by the green color in figure 16 in the inner nuclear membrane which is in continuation with the ER membrane. ER, ERE1 has a binding site for the unfolded protein in the, which is shown in the blue on its luminal surface. Its a nuclear surface domain contain a protein kinases of unknown functions and a specific RNA endonuclease shown in green. Binding of unfolded protein in the endoplasmic reticulum lumen dimerizes the receptors and somehow activates the endonuclease which cleave the the unspliced mRNA precursors encoding the transcription factors HAC1 as shown in figure. The two axons of the HAC1 mRNA has the linked together by tRNA ligase which usually splices the tRNA precursors forming a functional HAC1 mRNA. Following its synthesis in the cytosol, HSC1 protein moves back into the nucleus and activates the transcriptions of the gene, encoding several chaperones and other proteins that assist in folding the unfolded proteins in the ER lumen. Role of the PTMs in diseases. PTM play an essential role in the disease pathology 
cellular homeostasis and are a most actively sought after molecular targets for developing drug and chronic disease therapy. Proteins play a major role in the gene transcriptions, translation, cell signaling cascades, enzyme activities, etc. Abnormal PTMs lead to the production of the disorderly proteins which are non-functional or dysfunctional in their activities. Phosphorylation, acetylations of protein and a carbohydrate play a key role in expanding the avenue of translation uh, null medicines for heterogeneous diseases like cancer. Lysine acetylations of a tau proteins result in the tau tangles in the case of the dementia, whereas the lysine hyperacetylations of the beta amyloid peptide result in the impaired cognitions in the Alzheimer's disease. Age dependent memory impairment has also been observed due to the alterations in the histone acetylation in mouse models. In many mitochondrial, neurological and cardiovascular diseases, the carbonylations pattern has been informative tool for the identification of a stress level. Improper or incomplete glycosylations in the FC receptor for immunoglobulin A has been shown to impact IgA mediated immune response which in turn affect many diseases including HIV, alcoholic liver cirrhosis and other neuropathies. And many cardio Cardiovascular diseases as well as the neurological disorders like Parkinson's disease are due to the abnormal levels of the homeocysteine and methylations product of methionin, a high level of nitric oxide within the cell lead to inflammation, organelles damaged leading to the cell death mainly by apoptosis. In many diseases including autoimmune responses, HIV infection, lung diseases and multiple sclerosis and cellular enzymes regulation tyrosine sulfations plays a very important role. Post translational modification studies are facing a lot of challenges with the development of specific detection, purification and quantification method. The event of various refined methods of proteomics are helpful in overcoming the various challenges. These methods include the use of MALD or MS that is the matrix assisted laser desorption or ionization mass spectrometry. The combination of ECD, electron capture disso dissociations and the peptide fragmentations uh, with new generations of the high sensitive FTMs that is the Fourier transforms mass spectrometry. Also the field of bioinformatics has become a promising area of development and helped in to predict the modification sites in silico. The development of the databases of protein modification with reference to the already existed proteins and the genomic database is thought to be a significant way in which the detections and the quantification of the PTMs could also be improved. The significance. Fields of proteomics, gene regulations and protein functions help in the understanding the concept of post-translational modification. These PTM studies are being used to develop and determine advanced methods for some dis uh, diseases such as heart diseases, cancers, neurodegenerative diseases and diabetes. Having gone through these modules, let us now discuss the summary. Translation in the eukaryotes takes place in the three steps namely initiation, elongation and the termina terminations. Expression of a gene is a highly regulated process and depends upon the cellular environment. Polypeptide produces uh, from the translation needs a further processing or a modification for their activation to perform various cellular or enzymatic functions. This modification of the polypeptides could take place while they are being still synthesized that is the co-translational modification or once their synthesis is completed that is post-translational modification or PTM. 
PTM are the various covalent and a non covalent interactions of the polypeptide which help in converting the polypeptide into a protein molecule having all the functional properties and the and requires the macromolecular three dimensional structures. PTMs are responsible for the proteomics diversity and, and helps in the protein stabilization biochemical uh, activity regulations and the proteins targeting or the protein signaling through the protein protein interaction or a cascade amplifications. PTMs result in exponential increase in the proteome complexity relatively much higher than that of the transcriptomes and the genome. PTMs are very specific and occurs at a distinct amino acid side chain. Peptide linkages often mediated by kinase, phosphor phosphatase, transferase and the ligases which themselves uh, are classified on the basis of their ability to aid, remove or uh, transfer the protein, lipid or sugar uh, or a phosphate group etc. by the cleavage of the specific regulatory unit. A signal peptide help in the binding of the ribosome and the endoplasmic reticulum. Phosphorylations helps in regulating the bio biological activity of enzyme and the protein by adding or removing the phosphate group. Chromatin remodeling is necessary for uh, transcriptional activity, uh, transcriptional activity and is uh, regulated by the methylations of a lysine residues in histone proteins present in the nucleosome. Glycosylation is the most common type of the PTM. It involves the covalent bonding between the secretory uh, or the membrane bound protein and carbohydrate moieties. Disulfide bonds provide the stability and hence the functionality of the tertiary or the quaternary structure of the proteins and involves in the appropriate folding of the polypeptide chain which remain unchanged throughout the lifespan of the protein. Insulin is produced as a pre pro protein and later on cleaved at a specific site to become active as nitrosylations in uh, is the uh, additions of the nitric oxide group to the thiol group of the cysteine residue to attain uh, protein stability. Acetylations and the lipidations involved in the attachment of the specific acetyl or the lipid group to the polypeptide chain. Misfolded proteins are degraded by ubiquitinations. It involves tagging the protein which with ubiquitin and then cleaving it uh, at the proteosomes. Ubiqu the ubiquitinating enzymes help in the removing the ubiquitin from the protein. Chaperone binds to the hydrophobic regions of the polypeptide and shields them from the aqueous environment until the entire polypeptide is uh, translated and help in the protein folding. And we have the heat shock protein or ISSP is produced under stressful condition and they act as a chaperone and help in the protein folding. ERE1 is the transmembrane multifunctional protein and help in the binding and the folding of the unfolded protein in the ER lumen. Various techniques have been used to study the PTMs or matrix assisted laser desorptions. Uh, or ionization mass spectrometry, the combinations of ECD that is the electron capture dissociation and the peptide fragmentations with the degenerations of the high sensitivity FTMS that is Fourier transformed mass spectrometry. The study of the post translational modification is also being benefited in the growing bioinformatics field especially in the in-depth study of some diseases like the heart diseases, cancer, neurodegenerative diseases and diabetes. Thank you.